Testing. Hello, everybody. This is Mr. McAllen, and um, what we're going to be working on today is a continuation of a video from before, which is on linearizations. Now, one of the things I didn't mention before is how a linearization is an approximation for um, a function. So, for example, if you know the function is going to look like a parabola, and you want to do a linearization, you're basically creating a line, that's not a very good line, that is in a, that will approximate that curve with a simple equation instead of using a more complicated equation. And um, as a result, we can find out values for that function as approximate values through using linearization. So a couple things just to remind ourselves about. A linearization comes from an equation of a tangent line. So if you're in calculus, you should know uh, or recognize this equation here. It's a, it's a point slope form of an equation. And if we write it out in terms of, um, you know, we're doing this approximation and x equals a, and the function value here will be f of a, then we can generalize it to the linearization equation, say like y minus f of a equals the slope, which is um, f prime at a times x minus a, which is the center point. So you can see here how closely related or how almost they are exactly the same thing, the linearization and the equation of the tangent line. The only difference is we change y to L of x to represent the linearization. We want to find the linearization as an equation, so we just solve for it, and that's why it would be written as f of a plus the derivative of the a times x minus a. So moving on to our first example, it asks us to find the linear example, I'm sorry, this is <clears throat> the second example. We did the first example in the last video. We want to find the linearization at x equals a. That's the center point. And they have asked us to, uh, to recognize that a is equal to 2. And we want to find the linearization as a general equation. And then we want to see how accurate it is if we move um, to the right of the center point by 0.1 units and compare it to the function value 0.1 units away. So what we're going to first do is just follow the linearization equation, L of x equals f at the a value plus the derivative at a times x minus a. Substituting 2 for a, we have the function at 2 plus the derivative at 2 times x minus 2. Now we need to do some work on the side, which would be what is f of 2? f of 2 is equal to, um, I'm sorry about this, the equation here I missed, uh, it should have been x squared, not x cubed. So the equation is going to be, um, we're going to plug in 2 and square it. <clears throat> we're going to add 2 times 2 to it, plus 3, and that will give us f at 2 to equal 11. And then we have a derivative at 2. Now the derivative equation is simple polynomial derivative. That would be 2x plus 2. When we plug 2 into that, we get a derivative value at 2 to equal 6. Writing our linearization, I'll write it over here. L of x is equal to um, 11 plus the slope is equal to 6 times x minus 2. When we go and simplify this out, we end up getting 6x minus 1. And what I'm going to do is, so this is my linearization from part 1 of the um, function. Now I'm going to compare it to what happens if I, if I move from the center point, uh, point 0.1 to the right of that. So we're going to go over and we're going to look at Desmos. It's this neat graphing tool. So what we have here is we have just the... Um, we have just the polynomial equation, and if we zoom out, you can see how it's a parabola. And we're going to do our linearization. I'm just going to type in 
6x minus 1. And you can see how um, closely, I'm just going to turn off these points so we don't have them in the way. So you can see how close the tangent line approximates the curve at that point. But one of the things to mention is down in, th in this region here, we can see how the tangent line breaks away from the function and it's no longer a good place to do a linearization. And then if we follow the curve up here, the same thing on the other side. So near the center point of the approximation, you have, or at the center point, you have no error. And as you can see here, I typed in 2.1, which would be um, 0.1 units away from the center point, and we get an error of 1 hundredth. So uh, it tells you that we're pretty accurate. And if I, if I change it to 2.4 maybe, you could see that the error has gotten much, much bigger. It, the actual function value is 13.56, and the linearization is a lot less. And if I turn that on, you could see those two points, if we zoom in, you can actually identify the error between the two curves. And you can see right in this region here, the one function is breaking away from the other function, and there's significant error there. And But down in this region, the when we're really close to the center point of the approximation, there's virtually no error between the two, um, as, as it shows here in the table. So um, that's a quick explanation on how to use a linearization and approximate error through the use of a table. And we'd like you to uh, consider using the same um, functionality of the graph to find the error when you have to figure out error of an approximation. Hope this video helped. And um, check out the next video when we try to do an approximation for root functions.